This is Kathy Beal of EmpowermentUnlimited.net with Astro Insight for the week of July 29, 2019. You bored? Not really, huh? Well, guess what? This week brings surprises, monkey wrenches, plot twists, things you didn't think were going to happen, switches flipping, enormous changes at the last minute, major excitement on the way, and much of it stands to be personally very liberating, very freeing, although you may feel more than once that you've got whiplash. There are multiple contacts to Uranus in Taurus happening this week. Now, for most of the summer, most astrologers have been talking about what's going on in Capricorn with Saturn, the planet of adulting, and Pluto, the god of metamorphosis, a polite way to say death and rebirth, hanging out with the doorway to the past and the eclipses resetting all kinds of foundational areas of our lives at the same time. But Uranus has been just sitting early in Taurus, being vaguely uncomfortable in that Earth energy, and just biding his weird little time. Well, he's taking center stage this week again and again and again, and it is going to get our engines going and set a process or a series of processes in motion that are going to just ricochet and ricochet and snowball and keep going throughout the month of August. As we enter this lightning field, one of the summer's processes will be wrapping up. Mercury stations direct on the 31st and starts to bring to a close a retrograde that's been going on since July 7. The bulk of this retrograde has involved information, issues, communications, and rediscoveries that have something to do with the big changes that have been going on on the Cancer Capricorn eclipses because he spent most of the retrograde in the sign of Cancer. He is stationing direct on the 31st at the exact degree that the sun occupied on the Capricorn full moon lunar eclipse on the 16th, which means some stuff could start clearing up, coming to light, very possibly in the form of our understanding of our emotions about things that have been stirred We are all very touchy about the areas that are being shaken up by the eclipses because they are fundamental to our existence. And a lot of people have had the ground beneath their feet basically implode under them. Others have been experiencing reworkings, restructurings, a transfer of power in family matters, And there's been a theme of reclaiming yourself, reclaiming your own agency in all of this. The Leo New Moon kicks our engines into gear and hits the accelerator. It's at the very early degrees of this sign that is so vibrant and expressive and dramatic, and flamboyant, and generous, and attention-seeking, and it directly slams into Uranus. There will be events that happen very suddenly that get us going. There will be quick changes. There will be shifts inside of us that, again, get us going. And part of the getting us going does involve returning to the core of who you were. When you were really young, you knew who you were. It might have been beaten out of you. It might have been inconvenient for the adults around you for you to be who you were, for you to be who you are. But the circumstances are changing, and there's a real strong come-out-and-play energy going on with this, and it's propelling us, propelling all of us through the month ahead And one of the first blasts, one of the first hits of the accelerator causes massive change, massive breakthrough, massive unlocking, massive plot twists, epiphanies in close connections and in situations that mean a lot to us. We're getting the very strong taste of where we're supposed to be, 
where things feel good. And look at this as the assimilation of the last eclipse cycle from 2016 to the early part of this year on the Leo Aquarius axis when the North Node was in the sign of Leo and bringing the imperative of being who you really are and finding the people who fuel your fire, and getting away from the people who either ignore you, don't know you, or are standing there with some form of water to put your fire out. So now we're going towards situations that really do fuel and fan our fire and make us go more and more and more. This is because Venus, the planet of love and all we value, is going to slam into Uranus. And at the same time, Mars, who does her bidding, our masculine side, how we go after what we want. She says what we want. He goes and gets it. Mars is A, in a really, really easy flow with Jupiter, the guy who ups the ante of any action he's near. So it's not going to be a half-hearted effort, whatever happens. And B, Mars is right on top of Juno, who is the asteroid that rules partnerships and marriage. So just watch what happens. And to be clear, Partnerships and marriage in this instance do not mean one person sitting back and smiling devotedly at the other person who is the front of the relationship. It's much more about balance of power, equal power. It's definitely nobody puts baby in the corner energy. And as we excitedly, exuberantly go after what we want, as we set processes in motion that rapidly develop way beyond what we thought possible, we then hit choices or situations where we have to modulate what we're doing. We could run into massive fears, massive phobias, uh, the boogeyman hiding deep within us. We could run into big power issues, huge financial issues, Something will require a calibration of our approach, adjustments in how we're going about things. But you won't be stuck, and you sure won't be bored, and you'll probably be inspired to be creative in ways you haven't been in years. So please run with it. The homing thought of the week, choose joy. The song of the week, it's pretty old. And it was used to great effect in the final episode of Six Feet Under, which I recognize is also pretty old at this point. I just want to celebrate by Rare Earth. And the image of the week is finger painting. You can explore these energies more with my guided visualization, Meeting Uranus, and my Uranus and Taurus Guide, both of which are available at the shop at my site, empowermentunlimited.net, where you can sign up for my mailing list and book a session with me. There's also bonus content at patreon.com slash Kathy Beal, and I am deeply grateful to the people who are supporting my work there. Talk to you next week. Oh, and a postscript, if you are listening this far, I did make it to the neighborhood of make-believe.